Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to talk about confidence intervals. So when we're unable to know information about a population as a whole, we need to rely on samples. What we're going to do is we're going to take sample statistics, let's say maybe the mean or the proportion of something that is true, and we're going to use a process to make an informed inference about the population based on that sample. One way that we can do this is by using a confidence interval. So let's take an example to sort of set up the idea of what is a confidence interval. So suppose we want to estimate the average weight of an adult male in Houston. What might we say? How might we go about that? So let's say that one thing we could do is we could just make an educated guess. Let's say even based on the males that we know from the Houston area, and based on what we think they weigh, and taking kind of an average just from our limited perspective, maybe we might say that uh, we think the average weight of an adult male is about 180 pounds. And that may or may not be anywhere close to the actual value, but the problem with it really is that it's not really based on any sort of data. So if we wanted to improve our answer, we could work on getting a sample. So maybe we partner with a local doctor's office and they're able to share with us the weight data that they have for 1,000 of their adult male patients. And let's say that based upon that sample of 1,000 adult male patients in the Houston area, we actually get a sample mean or an X bar of 179.5 pounds. So in this case, it seems like our sample mean sort of backs up our educated guess. However, it's still only one value. So what we can do is we can actually move even further and give a bit of a safer answer. Rather than giving just one value, we could give a range of values. So we could say, hmm, Let's take this sample mean or this educated guess and let's say we think that that's true give or take about five pounds. So we're going to say that actually we think the average weight of an adult male in Houston is somewhere between 175 to 185 pounds. So now instead of giving a single value we're giving a range of possible values and that give or take five pounds is sort of giving us a, a symmetric interval. So we're basing it upon our, our educated guess or our sample mean of about 180, and we're going up and down by about the same amount. So this safer answer here, this is a confidence interval. Now, of course, we're not going to just make up values out of thin air. We're, of course, going to be basing this upon data and upon a particular method. So let's get into that. So there are lots of different types of sample statistics, and there are lots of different types of confidence intervals. So this is speaking very generally. The way that we calculate a confidence interval is we start with a point estimate. Now, a point estimate is an unbiased estimator from a sample. So the two main types of point estimates that we are going to work with are sample means, that is X bar, and sample proportions, that is usually P hat. Um, so we start with something from a sample. That's going to be the center of our confidence interval. We are then going to sort of give and take a particular range or value to create a range. The value that we are going to give and take is called the margin of error. Now how that margin of error is calculated depends on what kind of point estimate we're working with what kind of data we have or know, 
and how confident we want to be in our interval. So we're going to save the calculation of that for later videos, but again, this margin of error is kind of our give and take. Now margin of error is typically going to be abbreviated as just the capital letter E. And if we use, I'm just using here P for point estimate, but of course we could be using more specifically X bar or P hat, then in general your interval of confidence is going to be P minus your margin of error up to P plus your margin of error. So once we've calculated our interval, we want to be able to report it. When we report a confidence interval, it needs to include three things. It needs to include the interval itself, it needs to include the confidence level, and it needs to include the context of the problem that we're working with. So the interval is the actual values that we've calculated. So in our example about weights of adult males, our interval was from 180, sorry, 175 to 185 pounds. So we need to make sure we include our interval. The second thing that we wanted to include was our confidence level. Now there are some typical or standard confidence levels. Uh, some of them include 80%, 90%, 95%, and 99%. But you can actually use any level of confidence. Now confidence level talks about how confident we are that our procedure will allow us to create an interval that is accurate. So it doesn't talk about a probability of the true population mean being contained in the interval. It means if, for example, a 99% confidence interval means if we performed this confidence interval calculation on 100 samples, then we believe 99 of our confidence intervals, because we're 99% confident, 99 of our confidence intervals would contain the true mean. So there's our level of confidence. We can look kind of at a, at a picture here. So here is a, a picture of, in, in this vertical line here down the center, we have our true mean of 180. Let's say that that is the actual mean of the entire male population for their weight. And then here we can see 50 different confidence intervals based upon 50 different samples taken from that population. And so all the ones that are in blue here, notice that they do intersect with that true mean. So the true mean of 180 is contained within the confidence interval. But then if you look here, this one that's in red does not contain the true mean of 180. And that just happens based on variance in samples. Not every sample that we take is going to be as representative of our population. So this is an example of, in this case, one out of 50 did not actually contain the true mean. So we had an actual coverage of 98%, but that matches pretty closely with our 99% confidence level. And the final thing that needs to be in every confidence interval is the context. So you need to not just say we're 99% confident uh, in the interval 175 to 185. You need to give context. So we need to say that we're 99% confident that the true mean weight of adult males in the Houston area, so there's our context, weight of adult males in the Houston area is between 175 and 185. All right, guys, that does it for this video on introduction to confidence intervals. Catch us in the future videos where we look at an in-depth tutorial on how to calculate these confidence intervals. Until then, see you next time.